Well, a nor'easter. We've been hearing a lot about nor'easters over the past several weeks, and this is the third one that we're tracking within a two-week time frame. Let's talk about how a nor'easter starts. Now, areas of low pressure are pretty common all across the globe, and there are storms, if you will. So areas of low pressure, they form rain and they form clouds. However, a nor'easter starts as an area of low pressure, and that's really much what it is. And especially across our region, the Mid-Atlantic, we tend to see those areas of low pressure uh, move across the Mid-Atlantic states, just off the southeast coastline. And when it does, it taps into the very warm waters just off the southeast coastline or the Gulf Stream. That warm water allows that area of low pressure to intensify or strengthen. And as it does it turns into then a nor'easter. So let's talk about that nor'easter because it starts to move generally to the north and east as the westerly winds start to push the storm out to sea. The nor'easter gets its name because of the wind flow. So the winds come out of the north and east, and as it does, especially with our area, it tends to kick up the seas. That leads to flooding. So we'll talk more about that in just a second. But this area of low pressure spinning counterclockwise in the Atlantic it's a strong area of low pressure. So again, not just a typical low pressure that we find uh, any time of the year. On the back side of the storm, though, what's pretty uh, interesting about nor'easters, on the back side of it, the winds will shift out of the north and west. So these storms a lot of times produce a lot of rain depending on its track, especially at the coast. And with the colder air that tends to move in behind nor'easters, it actually produces snowfall and can produce some pretty significant snowfall events as well. Now, with our area, that wind coming out of the north and east, it tends to pile up the water there in its banks, and that a lot of times will lead to coastal flooding. So we're talking very windy conditions with nor'easters. That coastal flooding will lead to higher than normal tides. And then once the nor'easter pulls away, our winds relax and the water levels tend to go back down. So hopefully you learned a little bit about what a nor'easter is and how it forms.